People often come to me and ask for financial advice without knowing what they want or where they are going. It's a bit like you going into a travel office and asking for a ticket without telling them where you want to go, when you want to travel, how you want to get there or even how much you want to pay. Providing financial advice without understanding your goals, your values and your desires is just the same. I can give you a great ticket, but the destination may not be where you want to be and you may not arrive at the time that you want to be there. It angers me when some financial advisors recommend that you buy a financial product when they know almost nothing about you. For many of my clients, life planning is a new experience. It is often the first time that they've thought in depth about where they are and where they want to go and I treat them with respect and tread gently. To explore and truly understand your goals, aspirations and desires, I recommend that you fully engage with the three life planning questions from the Kinder Institute of Life Planning. The three questions are the most important and revealing of all the life planning exercises. Please allow yourself the time to contemplate each question individually and write as complete an answer as you can before moving on. These are important questions and you should ensure that you give them the time that they deserve. Imagine that you are financially secure and yet you have all the money that you need for the rest of your life. How would you live your life? Would you change anything? What would you do? Let yourself go. Don't hold back on your dreams. Will you change your life? And how will you do it? This time, imagine that you visit your doctor who tells you that you've only five to ten years left to live. The good news is that you won't ever feel sick. The bad news is that you'll have no notice of the moment of your death. What will you do in the years you have remaining? Will you change your life? And how will you do it? This time, your doctor shocks you with the news that you've only one day left to live. Notice what feelings arise as you confront your very real mortality, reflecting on your life, on all your accomplishments, as well as, well as all the things that will remain undone. Ask yourself, what did I miss? Who did I not get to be? What? Did I not get to do? I have found that you'll have a much deeper experience if you ask these questions with the help of a registered life planner. However, I realise that for many that will not be possible and I want everyone to have the opportunity to life plan themselves wherever they are and at any time. I believe that the world will be a better place if we all use our time wisely and achieve a full potential. With the aim of making life planning available to all, I've created a Life Goals website where anyone can register without charge. When you register, you'll have access to all of the life planning exercises and you'll find further help and guidance. In addition, you can save your work and return to it at any time. This website is entirely secure and there is no mailing list. We will not contact you unless you ask us to. If you want to ask questions or need any help, we are on hand if you need us. We all have a bucket list of sorts, even if it's only milling around in our heads. A bucket list is a list of things to do before kicking the proverbial bucket, and it's unique to each of us. If you haven't got a written bucket list, I strongly recommend that you write it down today and keep it up to date. There is power in having a written list and you'll be amazed at the difference that it will make. We're all so busy that the things that we really want to do seem to get buried deep in our minds and some may not come out until it's too late. The act of writing things down and reviewing keeps things fresh and you'll find that the things that you thought you never had time to do will get done. There are different ways of preparing a bucket list and I've suggested that you use the life balance wheel as your starting point, but do not be constrained by it. This is your bucket list and make sure that it's your own. 
Thinking big is fine, and you may want to do that round the world cruise, learn to fly a plane, get that university degree, or start a charitable trust. If these things are important to you, make sure that they are written down. However, thinking small is fine too. There are hundreds of things that will make you feel good and give you satisfaction. Things like knitting something, singing karaoke in public, throwing a surprise party, learning to dance, making up with a family member or friend, eating with chopsticks, studying a foreign language, sponsoring a child, learn, learning to love myself, quitting a bad habit and one that I really like. Go out of my way to do something nice for a stranger every day for 21 days. Brainstorm. Do not hold back. Put everything down, no matter how odd or impossible you think that it is. When you've thought of everything, review your list and prioritise. It's probably better not to be working on more than about six things at any one time. The other things in your list will keep for later. You may like to choose something that's easily obtainable at first, because when you start ticking things off, you will gather momentum. This stage always excites me, and I can't wait to hear about what you've achieved. Some people like to use the SMART acronym so that your goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and realistic, and time-bound. But don't get bogged down and use this as an excuse to procrastinate. Now is the time to take action. Review your list daily to keep it in the forefront of your mind. As things get done, you will find that your imagination will grow and you'll add more things to it. Keep your old lists because it's really satisfying going back to look at them and realise how much you've got done. Realising what you have achieved will stimulate your enthusiasm and you'll find that keeping your bucket list up to date becomes your most enjoyable daily activity. Be aware that just because something is on your list, you're not compelled to complete it. You may find that this was not the right thing for you after all, or that your circumstances have changed. If you cross it off and put something in its place, that's fine. Ask yourself, what do I want to achieve? What would I like to do? What's important to me? Is there anything that I would like to leave behind after I've gone? This is about you and what you want, and it is not about what you think that someone else wants you to do. Identifying and understanding your core values is the glue that holds everything together. Your core values are the underlying principles by which you live your life. They are what make you who you are, and they do not tend to change over time. When you live according to your core values, you find that life is easy. You're happier, less stressed, because you're focusing on the values that are important to you. If you are living in conflict with your core values, you become stressed, unhappy, dissatisfied and frustrated with who you are and what you're doing. When you're setting your goals and making decisions, ask yourself the following question. Is this decision aligned with my core values? My top 10 values are integrity, compassion, respect, contribution, honesty, trust, fairness, loyalty, sincerity and equality. Do you think that you could work with someone who has those values? Identify your own values and see how compatible they are. Is your life in balance? Does your wheel of life roll smoothly or is it a bumpy ride? I ask you to examine each area of your life and give yourself a score from 1 to 10. If you are married or in a relationship, is it a 10? And if not, how could you improve it? Is your relationship with your family good and do you see enough of them? Do you have a good social life and do you enjoy your leisure time? Are you trying to improve yourself and challenging yourself to get better at whatever you are doing? Is your career or your business on track and does it give you satisfaction? At this stage, do not be too analytical, just go for gut reaction. You will have already identified what is important to you when you did the previous exercises. 
I believe that one of the secrets of a successful life is for everything to be in balance. We can all think of many examples of people who are highly successful in some areas, but a disaster in others. If your wheel doesn't roll, what do you need to do? What changes do you need to make? And when do you think you should start? Keep your results so that you can refer back as your life plan progresses and you can see how much you have changed and how far you have travelled. If as a result of following my life planning work, you have a full and rewarding life where you can all make a difference and make this world a little better, my mission will have been achieved. The three kinder questions gave you time to reflect on what is important to you. You have prepared your bucket list and given a lot of thought to what you want to do in your life. You have now established your values to ensure that your decisions are supported by them. You have considered each area of your life to see where you may be out of balance and where you should be focusing your energy. This is an amazing achievement and you've already done more work on your life planning than 90% of people. Bring all of this together and make a clear statement of why you are here, what you want to achieve and what will be your legacy. Make this statement your burning desire. Make it light your torch and ensure that you feed that flame every day.